Hi, I'm Danny O'Brien. I'm the International Director at the Electronic Frontier Foundation and I'm here in Brussels with Julia Reda, who is the uh, MEP who has been leading um, the battle to stop the link tax and uh, censorship machines that we've uh, just seen unfortunately pass uh, in the jury vote. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of disappointing, right? But not the end. Yeah, I mean, we've lost with a, with a margin of one vote in the case of the link tax and uh, the upload filters was a bit, a bit more than that. But I think, uh, well, experience shows that the Legal Affairs Committee is uh, uh, all the copyright maximalists in the European Parliament getting together. So I think almost being able to kill the proposal at uh, committee level was already a good success and uh, a kind of a sign that people are waking up uh, to the threat of this proposal. So I do think that we have a good chance in two weeks uh, to get a majority against it in the plenary when all members of the European Parliament can vote. Uh, so I was just going to ask you what comes next. So yeah. so we're, this is the, the day after the vote. But there's another vote, when will that be? Right, so um, what happens now is that uh, the committee has decided on a package that includes the link tags and the upload filters. And now there's going to be a simple yes-no vote in the plenary as a whole to decide whether we accept this outcome or not, or whether it goes back to the drawing board, basically. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do now is to convince a majority of the individual members of the entire parliament to vote against. And, uh, well, we have two weeks to do this and the vote will most likely be on 4th of July. So I'd like to uh, call it our Internet Independence Day. Okay. But that's basically where we are and, uh, yeah, we've got our work cut out for us. I don't think the United States has successfully copyrighted that term. So I could, <laughs> and I noticed that you've got to this. I for it. Yeah. This, is, this is just printed, right? So, yeah, this is basically what uh, the European Parliament looks like. So we have these uh, eight different political groups from uh, the far left, uh, the Social Democrat, Green, Liberal, Christian Democrat, Conservative, Eurosceptic, and far right. Mm -hmm. And out of these uh, 751 members, we're going to need to have a majority in the vote. So over the next couple of days, this will be filling up with green and red dots of uh, who we expect uh, or who has declared that they're going to vote for or against this proposal. So it really is a matter of winning, winning these people one at a time. Exactly. Um, there's, is there a huge amount of, of party discipline? Do people vote in blocks or do they, um, do they have some flexibility? In the uh, committee, the party discipline was relatively strong. So, for example, from uh, the biggest uh, group, the EPP, people who didn't agree with the party line were asked simply not to go to this vote and they would be replaced by other people. Wow. And with the exception of uh, one guy, Pavel Svoboda, who actually voted against the link tax, they stayed completely within party line. Mm. However, they can't do that for the plenary vote because everybody gets to vote. Uh. So I do think that, there, that you're going to see uh, more people diverging from the party line. In the EPP, for example, the Swedish members have already said that they don't agree in the Liberal group there is a huge fight going on because uh, the Liberal members voted for the, this upload filters and the link tax. So um, the, the goal is to break the party lines and to make sure that every member has to make up their own mind whether they want to be responsible for uh, ending memes on the internet. So 64 million euro question, like if you're an individual, if you're someone in Europe, you have an MEP, what do you do to persuade them that these are terrible, terrible ideas and to vote against them? So I think the most important thing is uh, to spend five minutes to find out who you're talking to. So if the person who represents your district or your city uh, is really interested in the defense of fundamental rights, then you might want to tell them that actually the United, Sta uh, United Nations Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression has called these proposals dangerous and uh, a risk of censorship. But if you're talking to somebody who's really interested in startups, then you might uh, tell them about uh, how impossible it is for startups to pay for upload filters. So you really need to know 
what is the MEP interested in already in order to get your foot in the door and then always calling their offices or getting a journalist to ask them for a statement is a lot more effective than just sending an email right so and it's not just it's not just your voice to the MEP too like they're going to be reading the papers they're Absolutely. going to be listening to uh, uh, groups that, that, that perhaps like startup innovation groups or even a local hacker space or maker space, right? Yeah. So if you can get not just your voice but a collection of people together. Definitely, that's... definitely. I think it's, it's always a lot uh, more useful to have a statement from a group or a, a particular constituency and definitely one of the most effective things is to get a journalist from your country to ask the different MEPs where they stand on this because then they, they tend to feel like they really have to respond. If it's just an email from a citizen they might decide to just ignore it mm -hmm. but um, well if, if they are on the record in the press saying that they're going to vote against this then this is immediately useful and they will get a little green dot on here. Okay well we're looking forward to seeing like a few green dots start. Um, thank you very much for um, everything and I guess it's now time to organize the crowd.